Well, we're going to be picking up with our, our series on Hello, Holy Spirit. Our Bible verse, of course, is for those who are led by the Spirit of God. They are the children of God. And we're going to get right into that. But let's say our confession with me after this. I'm quick. I'm sharp. I'm good. Look. Oh, did I, say, did I miss it up? Oh, let's say it again. I'm quick. I'm sharp. I'm bright. I'm good looking. I'm strong. I'm healed. I'm very rich. And I'm a major blessing. Woo! I'm just excited. I don't know. I'm just too relaxed today. Hallelujah. I had some really good prayer this morning and really good things to share with you. You know, in, in this series, uh, Learning How to Be Led by the Holy Spirit, we talked about this verse, for those who are led by the Holy Spirit, that word led means, if you really look it up and you really research it out, it's very easy because it's in 99% of the translations. It means walking hand in hand with God. Walking hand in hand with God. And that's awesome that we have the Holy Spirit, that we can walk hand in hand with God. Well, today, you know, I just want to talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit and really some basics. It's one of my favorite subjects, so you guys are going to have to, like, pray that I don't go over, okay? (laughs) But God does not tell us here in this verse to be led by the spectacular, Hallelujah. Nowhere do we seek or be led by the spectacular things that happen in our lives, our outward circumstances, our outward situations. We talked about this before. We're seeking the knowings and the leadings of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we went, I mean, look, listen to the last couple messages. You'll, we, he has emotions. He just like us. He loves us. And so we're diving into it. So the answer to a thousand and one questions in our lives is be led by the Holy Spirit. Again, I'll say that. An answer to a thousand and one questions in our lives that we have, we have, and David, King David, we talked about this weeks ago, he always took the counsel of the Lord. He wanted accuracy. You know, I was riding Pastor Carol Joy's motorcycle this morning, (laughs) and I was riding against the wind, man, and I was like, and the wind was blowing so hard against me, but then when I turned around and I rode the opposite direction, woo, the wind just took me. I was like, yeah, this, this is what I'm talking about. Well, the Holy Spirit, when you're going, I was going the right direction, but I'm trying to make an illustration here. I don't know if it's coming out right or not. But anyways, when you're following the Holy Spirit, it's easier. Yes. It's easier. You're following that flow of the Holy Ghost. Why do you want that? I love Psalm 127, one, one of my favorite scriptures. Unless it is the Lord who builds the house, the builder's work is pointless. So in other words, if the Lord doesn't build the house, other translations say you're doing it in vain. You're wasting your time. We talked about this just recently. You know, well, everybody's like, well, what if he doesn't say anything to me? What if he doesn't say anything? I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening. I go by as much as he doesn't say to me as he does say to me. What does that mean? If he doesn't say anything to me, I just keep moving forward. We're going to learn that from Paul today. You just keep going until you get a little stop, or you get a little caution, or you get a little go. You just keep moving forward with him. So you have that sense on the inside. And some of the easiest scriptures, I think, for us to look at are the scriptures of Paul, because Paul and the early church... They were led by the Holy Spirit. And I love in Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15 says something very, very easy for us. Very easy for us to follow the Holy Spirit. It's not something like, woo! No, it just seems good to them to do this. It just seems good. You know when you have things in your life, you're like, I don't know, it just doesn't seem right to do that. But other times you're like, man, this is... Woo! This seems good to do. Well, here in Acts chapter 15, it's interesting, and I just kind of cut the chapter up a little bit so you can see where it says this. They had to make some big decisions in the early church. Big decisions in the early church in Jerusalem. And this is how they were led. Verse uh, 22 in Acts chapter 15 said, Then it seemed good to the apostles and the elders with the whole church to choose men out of their company. Some spooky thing? No, it just seemed good. Verse 25, it seemed good unto us, having come into one accord, to choose out men and send them unto you. It just seemed good. Verse 28, for it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. That's pretty major. 
But that's how they really follow the Holy Ghost. We, have, we are a spirit. We live in a body. But our spirit is alive, and we're spirit to spirit, connected with the Holy Spirit on the inside and to God. So we have the seamer, I like to say, or the knower. You always, I always talk about knowing. You, until you know, don't do anything. You know? And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But I love, in the book of J- Luke, Luke wrote 24 chapters. Everybody say 24. 24 chapters. Why did he write it? It just seemed good to write to you, Theophilus. Look at this verse in verse 3 and 4. It says this. This is Luke talking. It just seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all the things from the first or the beginning, to write into you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus. He's writing 24, he's writing a long letter to Theophilus. That's 20, can you imagine that? Theophilus, Theophilus, what do you got in your hand right now? What was it? It's from Luke. (laughs) All the scrolls and everything, it's from Luke. It's It's a letter from him. It just, it just seemed good to him to write it to me. I'm going to read it. And then he starts sharing it with everybody else. And there is the gospel of Luke. Just seemed good to me to write this. Hello. Thank God he wrote it. But it just, that's how he was led by the Holy Spirit. So as we're led by the Holy Spirit, we can see that it's really easy. I love this quote by a man of God. And my, my, my spiritual father used to always say this about the Spirit and and following the Holy Spirit, the person who keeps his spirit shut away and never listens to it becomes crippled in life and becomes easy prey to selfish and designing people. The person who listens to his spirit is the man, woman, boy or girl, who will rise to the top in life. As we're listening, you businessmen, you know this. You're in business, and you really have to seek down on the inside for your next step. I've been there. I know that. I was like, because you have all these employees that you have to bring with you. You have all these finances that you're believing God for. So you're looking on the inside, and that's what we're supposed to be doing every day. Yeah. Amen? Every day we're supposed to be looking on the inside. Glory to God. I like uh, Paul's second missionary journey, and this is a good story. And this is very interesting, because you're going to see him... Start off one way, and he stopped. Oh, my. Well, let's go this way. And then he stopped. But God is maneuvering him. You know, most people think that following God is a straight path. But how many many for you has it been a straight path? Not me. It's been like over here. It's like you're going to Albuquerque, which is in the United States, and it's far away. But you're like, okay, we're going to go through Phoenix. No, let's go through Flagstaff. Let's go to the north first. Let's go over this. Actually, I'm going to have you go to San Diego first, or I'm going to have you go to San Francisco first before you get. You know, you're following the Lord, and that's the best trail to take. Because if you go straight there, you could miss out of a whole lot of opportunities and blessings that God has for you. Amen? So here in Paul's second missionary journey, I'm going to read this story, and then we're going to look at i just read a couple of things before, but this is interesting. Paul's second missionary journey. So here he is in Acts chapter 16, verses 6 through 10. So I'm just going to jump right into it. The Holy Spirit had forbidden Paul and his partners to preach the word in southwestern provinces of Turkey. So they ministered throughout the region of central, uh, uh, central and western Turkey. So they're going. They're going for it here. Let's go south, boys. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Let's go to the middle and towards the north. So the Holy Spirit is guiding him here. We're going to take a look at a a couple more verses here. And then, verse 7, when they got as far as the west as the borders of Messiah, they repeatedly attempted to go north. They're trying to get north. No, no, no. Into the province of Bithynia. But again, the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to enter. So he's saying, let's go north, boys. There's everybody going north. Well, wait a minute. He's following the unction, and there's a reason for it. We're going to get to the point in just a second. Verse 8, he said, So instead, they were right on through the province of Mysia to the seaport of Troas. That's the city of Troy, in case you you guys like to watch movies. That's the seaport of Troas, the city of Troy. It's it's next to the ocean. Verse 9, while staying there... Paul experienced a supernatural, ecstatic vision through during the night. A man from Macedonia appeared before him in a dream, pleading with him, you must come across to the sea of Macedonia to help us. Verse 10, after Paul had this vision, we, that word we is pretty important here because that word we is where Luke joins the company. 
Luke joins on. Luke joins the company now. He's like, let's go. So as Paul had this vision, we immediately prepared to cross over to Macedonia, convinced that God himself was calling us to go and preach the wonderful news of the gospel to them. When we look at this, what did Paul know about more than anything? Is following the Holy Spirit. Now, one thing you have to know, I'm going to jump a little bit ahead of myself, and then we're going to go to the stories. You know why the reason he is supposed to go to Macedonia? The Philippian church. Everybody know Philippi, the Philippian church. The church, listen to me, the church that funneled more money than anyone else into his work was the church at Philippi. And God knew he needed the finances to do the work. So here he's saying, we're going to go to Macedonia, and that's where the Philippian church was birthed and started. And that was pretty much the main church that sponsored his rest of his second missionary journey, the third missionary journey, the going into Rome. They sponsored him. What if he wouldn't obey God? He was a man of accuracy. And as Christians and as believers, we want accuracy. Like the Lord said to me years ago, you know my story. I said, I'm going to go over here. And he goes, do you want to, do, you want to be two or three years out of, out of my will? And I'm like, what? And I've never heard anyone talk about that before. He says, if you take that step, you'll be two or three years out of my, out of my will. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. where do you want me? <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's look at this. So Paul said, let's go, let's go south, boys. This is the nutshell. Let's go south, boys. And he was permitted not to go. Then Paul said, okay, let's go to the middle of Turkey. Okay, that feels good. Let's do that. And then Paul said, let's go north. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's stay in the center of Turkey. Well, let's, let's, let's head over to the ocean. Let's go west of the ocean. Yeah, that seems good. So all the steps of the way, he was going to the city of Troy. And in the city of Troy is where in the, the, the Macedonia vision, and that's where he loaded the boat, and he went on that two-day journey. Can you imagine that? They weren't prepared for a two-day journey, guys, in the boat. They were like, let's go. They were they wanting to stay in Turkey and keep, they keep wanting to go north. <laughs> they don't have any idea they're going on a two. Could you imagine? Okay, guys, uh, uh, the Lord's told me we're going to, to cross the water. Really? We, did we get tickets? <laughs> Do we have the money to go on this boat? Well, God's going to supply. I said, God's going to supply. Wherever He's preparing you to go, He will supply. We just have to follow Him. Amen? We know this by moving here. We had no money. We, we, she got in a car wreck with Max when he was younger in Oklahoma. We had, we had no car. We had no money. We had a, a truck that was coming to load all our furniture up, and we were moving to California. And we came out here with nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, we probably had a couple hundred dollars in an account maybe, but that was about it. But we came out here. We stayed in uh, over here, we had a, our little cat with us, and we stayed out here at the Motel 6 for a couple weeks, and we're like, gosh, I the Lord, you were sure? Because everybody's like, you don't want to stay here in Santa Barbara. You want to go over this direction. You want to go an hour this way or 45 minutes there? And the Lord goes, no, I want you centered in Santa Barbara. Yeah. So you just follow him, and he's going to provide for you. That was for somebody. Hallelujah. Is that good? Right, 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 right. Now, if Paul would have moved full speed ahead into Asia towards the north, he would have been on the wrong path for God. He wouldn't have been in the place to go to Macedonia, but Paul went after accuracy. I'm going to talk about three different ways where we follow him or, or kind of like how we get nudged out there. You know, there's one way is taking baby steps. Sometimes you have a baby takes a couple steps and kind of just take a step. Sometimes we have to take those baby steps and follow on the inside and see what's good. You know what I mean? Another way to say it is, I call it the traffic signal. Everybody knows there's traffic signals out here. It's a following the traffic signal, or I can say following the life traffic signal. You have a traffic signal in life. You could go like that. It is important, however, to keep listening on the inside as you're driving. You don't want to miss traffic signals in light and, and, and run a red light. You don't want... You, the best way to say it, I guess, is... Let me read my notes here. Um, if, if, a, if a traffic light turns yellow... I would slow down and proceed with caution, just like you do when you're driving. I mean, you don't run a red light. Come on, if the Holy Spirit says, like you said to Paul, forbid you to go. No, you just, you just don't go in that direction. You don't think about it. You don't, 
You just, you just know that it's right for you. Amen? So let's see here. Traffic, uh, uh, life traffic uh, turns yellow. You slow down, proceed with caution. Suddenly, if the life traffic light turns red, something does not seem right on the inside. What do we do? Then we stop at the red light. Sometimes you just have to stop at the red light for a while. We have a traffic signal right out here. And I'm telling you, thank God they changed it. Because before, it wouldn't change. It was red. Everybody remember that? It was red, and you're sitting there going, Everybody's, everybody else is stopping and going in, a, in this intersection, and then ours is like red. Yep. Talk about patience. You know, and I saw some of you were like, you're like, well, I'm just going to turn right because I can turn right. <laughs> you know, forget the traffic signal. And then I see people going over into the other areas and turning around. But listen, what we do is sometimes we have to wait a while. And that's okay because that means God's lining things up for you. Right? We see that all through the You know, what's, what's to say? Bible, the Bible says that God sent his angels before you to prepare the way for you to go. God loves us. God's going to take care of us, right? Hallelujah. And it's tough sometimes to wait. Until you have a knowing, a knowing or a seeming on the inside, then proceed. But until then, just relax. He's, he's working things out for you. Amen? Uh, one of my favorite is testing the waters. We had baby steps. We had traffic light. And we have, baby, and we have uh, testing the waters. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> I remember going to different hotels, and you always, you, you're out there looking out the window, and people are sticking their toes in the water of the hotels, you know, in the pool, zooming pool. And they're like, ooh, ooh. You're like, wow, that water is cold. <laughs> but put your toes in the water. If it seems good, then go ahead and put your ankles in the water. If it still feels good, then put your knees in the water. And if the water seems really right and it feels even better, then go up to your waist. And if it still feels good, go up to your shoulders. And the next thing you know, you'll be head first in the plan of God for your life. Amen? Because sometimes we, you know, testing the waters for me is like when we had to do certain things, we moved to Poland and everything. Well, we moved to Poland. First, I stepped out and I'm like, I don't, I've, let's go see if we can purchase tickets. Let's see how it feels. Let's get online. Let's, you know, each step of the way, you're just kind of sensing on the inside. And when it seems good, wow, and you have peace, kind of like our relationship. When I met Pastor Carol Joy, I said, listen, we're going to be friends and we're going to follow peace. In every step of the way, we're going to follow peace. We're not going to override our hearts on peace. We want that peace in our hearts so that we know without a shadow of a doubt we're in the will of God. Amen? Come on, are you guys excited or what? Yeah. Following the Holy Spirit is amazing. You know, when I was praying, and, and I, I'm not sure if it's for our online believers or for who it is, but I, I kept getting this, and the Lord kind of just kind of nudged me, and he said, someone has a desire to buy a house. And I said, okay, so what's going on? He said, someone has a, des a desire to buy a home. And as we follow the Holy Spirit, follow these steps. Follow each step as you go. Get the contract. And that word contract kept coming. Get the contract. Does it seem good? If it doesn't, maybe he's got something better for you. If it seems like, oh, this is the one. I mean, Pastor Carol Joy, and she walked in this building. We were down the street at the high school. She walked in this building. And every time, I mean, she knows. She knows that she knows that she knows. Every time we've, we've had to move somewhere, we walk in a bit. I just, I just let her go before me. <laughs> it's like those guys out there. It's probably a bad illustration. But you know in the army when they send those guys out there with the, 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 the searchers for the landmines and everything, you know? I send Pastor Carol Joy out first. <laughs> but she goes, I mean, when we were in Poland, I, 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 we were moving to Poland. We didn't know what we were going to get. And I saw this one email from somebody saying, we have a house rent. I'm like, oh, that's too big. That's four-story house. We're moving to Poland. That's, that's so, it was four stories. This is a little, you know, had this four story house and a garage underneath. And that was, was that the four story? Was that, I don't remember. Anyways, and I was like, that is way too big of a house. And I'm like, honey, I go home and I'm like, honey, this person emailed us about this house today. And it's like four stories. She goes, that's it. That's it. I know that's it. And I'm like, well, God, that's like twice as much as I wanted to spend. No, that's it. That's the Holy Ghost. You know, she walks in this building and I'm like, it's okay. It's kind of small. She says, no, this is it. This is where God wants us. This is it. Our, where we're living right now. She walked in. She goes, no, I can't understand. I, I don't know how it's going to work out. I don't know how the per paperwork's going to work out. I don't know anything, but I just know this is it. 
That's the knowings. And you guys do it all the time. This is just stirring you up. This is just showing you to get with him. This is following the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen? Come on. But someone's desiring to buy a house. Step out and start looking. Look on the inside. Not buy your emotions. Because our emotions, I'm telling you, sometimes I get so excited about stuff, and I have to take a couple steps back, and I'm like, yes, I like that bike, because I'm a bike bicycle guy. I like that bike, I'm made. Step back, to beep, 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 beep. Is that the right one, Lord? Oh, it's not. Okay, well, it's really cool, and it's nice and everything, but he has the perfect one for you. Whatever it is in your life, he's got the perfect one for you. Hallelujah. If it's not, you know, going back to this contract, if it doesn't seem good on the inside, wait a little while. Pray about it. He'll lead you. There'll be the right time and the right house for you. And this goes for everything in our lives. Yeah. Amen. We want to just follow him because he wants us so blessed. Amen. Amen. And that's really exciting. So wrapping it up, I go by just as much about what he doesn't say to me is what he does say to me. Like I said, if he doesn't say anything to me, I just keep walking along. He's working. Remember, Jesus said God's always working. So I just keep walking along. You know, joy of the Lord is my strength. I've been saying that a lot lately. How about you? And he's really on this kick with me. I mean, I'm taking another step up. But he had this impossible, all things are possible to them to believe. Oh, gosh. You guys are going to get some message in the future about that. Because we're believers, amen? He's wanting to get something across to us. So, you know, if not, wait for a while for the contract of the house. Pray about it. There'll be the right time. God has an individual plan for everyone. That's your children. How, much have, how many people have kids? I mean, we all have kids, and we want the best for our kids. That's not, God wants more than that for us, amen? God has individual plan. Max, our son didn't raise his hand yet, thank God. Uh, Max, <laughs> God has an individual plan for everybody. He's got a beautiful girl, though. Whatever, uh, in ministry, business, or any area of your life, God has a plan for each one of us. So we want to pray that plan out. We talk a lot about praying out our future and following him, amen? And he will take us to the high places in life. Last scripture, we'll go over it again. Romans 8, 14, for those who are led, that's us, hand in hand by the Holy Spirit of God. We are the children of God. Let's raise our hands. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much. We worship you and we thank you that we're in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing all the time. Every circumstance, every situation that comes up against us, we have the right answers. And in Daniel, the first chapter, Father, we thank you that they find us 10 times smarter. He's like, you, you're the one giving us, you're the genius, Holy Spirit, showing us the way, showing us the path, showing what boat to get on, showing what car to do, everything else we're doing in our life. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Believers Family Online, thank you for joining us. I'm going to leave a little bit of information on the side. If you'd love to donate, we'd love for you to join with us as we share the gospel, the good news, the joy of Jesus around the world. Until next week, we're going to say for the kingdom because we end every service. And we're, we're going to receive our tithes and offerings in here. And we're going to be wrapping up. But every service we come together, we say for the kingdom of God to do everything for Jesus Christ. On the count of three, one, two, three, for the kingdom. God bless you. Have a fresh week and get with the Lord in Jesus' name.